I read you founded the Friends of the Carmel Forest. Yes, uh, that was a lovely thing. That's actually how I got involved in the city council because one day I remember I was at a retirement party for a Forest of Beach, uh, no, a city council member or a planning commissioner, I don't remember, a city official, you know, elected official or appointed official was retiring. And so there was a party for her at her house. And I remember going there, it was a really fun party, everybody was really having a good time. And uh, that was in 1990, I believe. And all of a sudden I felt me being, myself being propelled under one elbow by Clayton Anderson, the other elbow by Jim Holliday, and, um, and taken into this back bedroom and thrown down on the bed. And then they, they put this manila envelope in my hand and they said, congratulations, you're the president of the Friends of Carmel Forest. You're the founding president of Friends of Carmel Forest. Well, they had had articles of incorporation drawn up. It was all ready to go. And um, so I said, okay, fine, fine whatever. And uh, that was fun. And as our first fundraiser, uh, Clayton had known Burl Ives when he was working for the Department of Interior in Washington, D.C. And he got Burl Ives to come up for his last performance Oh, sweet old Burl, he was so old and so infirm. And Burl Ives came to Sunset Center, brought his instrument, came on stage with no introduction, and sat down on a stool and played for 45 minutes for a captive audience, sold out audience. It was a thrill, it was a thrill. And we didn't really charge enough. I think the tickets were like $15, $15 each or something, I don't remember. And we only made 10,000, which at that time was huge, you know, we thought, Wonderful, but we could have really gotten a lot more. Anyway, very sweet man. He came at Clayton's invitation to sing for Carmel's Forest. That was a thrill. That really was a thrill. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. What were some of the other um, projects that that organization took on? Um, well, they're currently under the chairmanship presidency of Maria Sutherland, who's doing an absolutely marvelous job. She has this plan to plant 100 trees during the centennial year. So she's appealing to people in the village to contribute money for the planting. And she's got different categories of, of, uh, of uh, spending. And depending on how much you give, depends on where the tree is planted. So I would say Maria Sutherland is doing, and her current, organ uh, her current board are doing a marvelous job of promoting the trees in the village, working with the city to get these trees planted. That's great. Um, what were some of the other organizations that you were involved in since you've I, been back? I served, you know, on various boards. Um, you know, the city has a part ownership in Tor House. I think they gave $10,000 uh, originally to start the foundation. So for a time, uh, the city was to send a representative from the city council to attend those, those foundation meetings. So I was at one time a delegate to the Tor House Foundation board and I did that. Then I was asked to serve on the Cherry Center for the Arts board, which I did for a time, um, and um, the Carmel Preservation Foundation, and um, you know, I can't even remember, but all, many different little boards at a, at a, at a I don't mean little in terms of, I just mean a nice boards in Carmel um, over a period of time, enjoyed it very much. So right now I'm just terribly involved, as I say, in the Carmel Pres uh, Residents Association. Uh, of all those organizations you've been involved in, do you have a particular favorite? Carmel Residents Association. Okay. 